right. So I'm going to give you a really quick, really brief overview of African colonization. All right. Uh, I don't know if any of you have gotten that far into the reading or have even opened it, um, but I've gone ahead and I've picked all of the videos out of the reading as well as some other places and I've compiled them into the announcements tab. So I'm going to show you that really quick um, before we get into the official lecture. So let me share my screen with you. Um, we'll talk about this later. Uh, in the announcements, um, and if you have any questions during lecture, just throw it in the chat. Um, I'll keep that open. Um, but don't unmute yourself, all right? So uh, there are a bunch of videos on, in the reading that are supposed to help you comprehend a lot of what the reading is about. Um, if you don't feel like reading it or for whatever reason you just, you know, you think the reading is going to be really difficult, these videos, I've put them all right here. All right. Um, these first four, there are four. There's one, two, three. There's also one hiding right here. All right. That one just didn't show up. Um, watch these four. All right. At the very least, watch these four. They'll give you essentially what I'm going to tell you right now. Um, it's just not my voice and it's not my lecture, all right? Um, and then these are some supplementary ones that will help you with the project that is due, I believe the 24th. Yeah, the 24th, all right? I don't need that. So with that said, they're all right here. Check the announcements tab. You should already be checking the announcements tab in Canvas. Um, if you are having any problems with Canvas at all, feel free to email me. Um, although know that I will not be checking my email over spring break. So with that said, we're gonna jump to here. So first thing that you need to know about the colonization of Africa, right? We've already talked about uh, how Europeans enslaved the African peoples right? And how that possibly affected mainland Africa, right? There were a lot less males left in Africa. Um, the population changed a lot. It also meant that certain groups of people, namely those who were willing to sell slaves, rose to power while others did not. With that said, before this huge, what we call the scramble for Africa, where all of the African nations that you know today become a thing, um, there are very much tribal groups, okay? So all of these are the tribal groups that lived in those specific areas of Africa. The only two that we're gonna specifically talk about are the Zulus and the Tongaland, the, these two right here, and a little bit Swaziland, but not very much. This is the only one we're gonna specifically talk about, but know that these groups, of Africans controlled Africa, all right, before Europe came in and colonized. This is not, you'll notice there's no borders, okay? There's no lines like we have between the states of the United States. There's no colors like you usually see on a world map. There weren't any formal borders at that time. The African culture of the time and the African peoples of the time didn't really believe in formal borders. You see that down here. There's very little sense of formal borders. You essentially just live where you live. And if someone from a different tribe or different clan, like here, comes over here, you tell them that it's not their land. But otherwise, there's no real, nobody took out a map and drew lines. All right. That's a, that's a European thing. And we'll talk about why they drew those lines and why that's actually a big issue, all right? So you also have uh, these Arab groups, all right? The Ottomans, who actually are up here in Turkey as well. Um, they own a couple of places, but you don't really need to know too much about that. And then before we even get into the scramble for Africa, Europeans were already buying and selling things to Africans, right? This is the land that they already controlled 
just on the coast, right? Over here, you see Germans, the Brits, right? Liberia is actually independent. So is down here where we said the Zulu land was, all right? Hey, Let's Mr. Gibson. Hey, go ahead and mute yourself real quick. I'm in the middle of something. Right. I appreciate you saying hi, though. Um, the French are up here. Obviously, you see where all of the Europeans are, okay? But we're going to talk about how this goes to right here, this, all right? That's a huge change, right? You see all of a sudden Britain owns everything in red. All of this red is owned by Britain. All of this green is owned by the French. Those of you who have already looked at the map activity, you will actually fill out a map like this, all right? Once again, the only territory we're going to specifically talk about um, in the readings, really, and in lecture a little bit, is right here. This is the Belgian Congo. Um, the Congo um, is a, it's a sad story, but it's also a very unique story. Um, and that's why we're gonna focus on that instead of all of these other colonies, all right? And you'll notice that Ethiopia, uh, we've already talked about, um, and Liberia are still independent. They're the only two places in Africa that remain independent throughout this whole thing, all right? Ethiopia, because they actually modernized their military, military excuse me, uh, Liberia, because um, the United States actually owns that land and sets it aside, all right? So, now we got this, all right? We had this, right? No traditional borders at all, and a couple of tiny swatches of land that are owned by someone else. I mean, look at Italy. Italy owns like this tiny part. And then now all of it's controlled. This huge difference comes because of something we like to call the Berlin Conference, all right? So if you go back here, you'll notice there's actually two videos on the Berlin Conference. The Berlin Conference is actually a meeting in Berlin, right? Where all the European powers come together, all the major ones at least, all the ones that you see represented here, come together and they say, all right, we're starting to notice that people are starting to grab land. But what happens if France decides it wants this piece of land, but Britain also wants this piece of land, right? They go to war. Europe's, Europeans don't want that. They don't want to be fighting each other over this because then a lot of people die and they lose a lot of resources, right? Also, they just generally want to avoid war. So instead, they go to the Berlin Conference and they literally sit at a table. I actually have a picture I wanted to show you. This is a political cartoon about it. It doesn't literally look like this, but they literally all sit at a table kind of like this. This is the German leader, very attractive man, bushy but mustache, completely bald. Um, <laughs> And they literally cut up Africa, right? So you see this in the cartoon, they're cutting up little slices of Africa. In reality, these are the slices we're talking about, all right? They literally take a map of Africa, sit down and start drawing lines. That's where all of these borders come from. Like we already talked about, African culture at the time didn't really care for formal borders. It didn't matter that much. You had your land, your neighbor had their land. And you knew when they were coming into your land, just like you know if your neighbor's playing in your yard, right? It's, or is playing on your side of the park. It's just that simple. It wasn't so formal, all right? This is a European idea, just so that they didn't go to war, right? So they draw all these lines and they start right here. They start exploring the land that quote unquote belongs to them. All right, here's the problem with that. There were no African nations at that meeting, all right? The Berlin Conference did not have a single African, not a single African leader, not even a single African person, 
All right. So the Europeans just decide that Africa is theirs and they don't really care about the people who are there. These lines, for instance, let's take this line right here. All right. Make sure you remember where this line is. That line actually happens to cut through multiple different groups. And that happens all over Africa. You'll notice these don't have anything to do with this. Look how many different nations, African nations, quote unquote, inhabit this area and how many different social and cultural groups there are. A lot of these groups don't like each other. That's gonna cause serious issues because now they live in the same country, all right? And the person who decided that they lived in the same country was some, was some European guy who lived thousands of miles that way, all right? So obviously this is gonna cause a lot of issues. That's the big idea that we're focusing on when we're talking about the, the colonization of Africa. All of the decisions that Europeans made without any thought for what the Africans might think or, what, or whether the Africans would care or not. Um, and we'll talk about why that was and why Europeans were able to colonize Africa so easily when we come back from spring break, all right? That I'm not gonna talk to you, I'm not gonna talk at you, excuse me, for another 20 or 30 minutes because I wanna leave some time for questions and we'll have plenty of time in lecture on the 20th and the 22nd, all right? So this website is actually linked to one of your assignments, you can go through and click through this as much as you want. Um, later on, I'll actually ask you to click through this one. This just shows you what years the colonies became independent, all right? When they, when they stopped being owned by Europeans, all right? And you'll notice that some of these only really become free in the 1990s, all right? Some of these countries became free after I was born, all right? They're, they're younger than I am. All right, they're younger than I, yeah, okay. Sorry, I thought my English was failing me again. Ooh. All right, so let me stop sharing really quick. Um, we've seen this. Um, some actually, some a lot of you guys have shown up a little late, so I wanna make sure you guys hear this too before I stop sharing. Um, the reading. I understand it's about nine pages of reading. I mean, there's some pictures in there, but it's still a lot of reading. Um, if you struggle with the reading at all, one, you can email me um, or simply look up any of the words you don't know what they mean. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in Word in a second. Um, or you can look at these videos to try and help yourself understand what they're trying to say, okay? I've the reason I inserted these links in the reading is because I thought if you watched these at that point in the reading, you would really understand what they meant, even if some of the reading was a little confusing. So I noticed that a lot of people kind of, they opened the reading and they kind of immediately closed it because they were like, wow, that's a lot of words. Uh, that's confusing. I don't want to, I don't want to read that. If you were one of those people, I'm not, I'm not going to, make fun of you or get angry or anything. That's cool. I understand. So I've taken those videos and I've put them here. All right. So if you don't do anything else, um, make sure you watch these videos, at least these first four. Um, these last three are actually part of the project that's going to be due on the 24th. All right. Um, but these first four will give you a general overview of the African colonization and go a little more in depth than I can uh, right now, all right? So make sure you watch those. It's just in the announcement section. So I told you 10 minutes, I think I went a little over. Let me stop sharing. Now I will give you a little bit of time for questions and then I'll go over one more thing before you guys are free for spring break. 